Okay, so in this video, we are going to finally see this phenomenon of entanglement. So let's go back to our two qubit system. But now, let's assume that we are given the state of each of these two qubits individually. So we are told that the state of the first qubit is alpha 0, 0 plus alpha 1, 1. And similarly, we are told the state of the second qubit is beta 0, 0 plus beta 1, 1. What we want to know is, what's the state of this composite system? Okay, so, well, we, we'll see formally how to think about it, but really the, you know, here, let's just do it informally. So what you do is you just take the state of this first system and you sort of multiply it by the state of the second system. So what do you get? You get the amplitude of zero, zero is alpha zero, beta zero. The amplitude of zero, one, is alpha zero beta one. The amplitude of one zero is alpha one beta zero. And the amplitude of one one is alpha one beta one. So now, well, let's do an example. So you might say, well, suppose the first qubit was in the plus state and the second qubit was in the state one over two zero plus square root three over two one. What's the state of the composite system? Well, the composite system is in the state 1 over 2 root 2, 0, 0, plus square root 3 over 2 root 2, 0, 1, plus 1 over 2 root 2, 1, 0, plus square root 3 over 2 root 2, 1, 1. Okay, so now, suppose that I ask a different question. Suppose I were to give you the state of the two qubits together. Suppose I told you that this was the state, and I were to ask you, can you find me the state of each qubit separately? What would you say? Well, if it, if it was this particular state of the two qubits, you could, of course, tell me, yes, you know, the state of... The first qubit is, is this, it's the plus state, and the state of the second qubit is this, it's half zero plus square root three over two one. But suppose this is not the state I was giving you, suppose I gave you some arbitrary state. So suppose I gave you a general state of the two qubits, and I asked you, can you take this general state and can you factor it? and tell me what's the state of the first qubit and what's the state of the second qubit. Now, you might think, well, this might be a hard problem to do in terms of doing the calculation. But what turns out to be the case is that, in fact, you can't even solve this question in general. That there are states of the two qubit system which cannot be factorized as a state of the first qubit times the state of the second qubit. So let's see an example of this, and let's try to understand what this might mean. So here's the state. It's a very simple state. It's an equal superposition of 0, 0, and 1, 1. So with amplitude 1 over square root 2, the two qubits are in the state 0, 0, meaning both of them are in the ground state. And with amplitude 1 over square root 2, both electrons are in the excited state. So let's assume that you could write this as alpha zero zero plus alpha one one times beta zero zero plus beta one one. Expanding what we have is that this is alpha zero beta zero 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 alpha zero beta one zero one alpha one beta zero one zero alpha one beta one 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 and now by comparing coefficients what we see is that alpha zero beta zero is one over square root two and also alpha one beta one is one over square root two now the fact that alpha zero times beta zero is some non-zero value means that both alpha zero and beta zero must be non-zero. And similarly, both alpha one and beta one must be non-zero. So in fact, 
all four of these numbers must be non-zero. But now, how do we reconcile that with the fact that alpha zero times beta one, al alpha one times beta zero must both be equal to zero? So for this to happen, either alpha zero or beta one must be zero, and either alpha one or beta zero must be zero. So this is a contradiction. So what we conclude is that there's no way to factor this state as a state of the first qubit times a state of the second qubit. Here's another way to say it. You see, quantum systems have this property that if you bring two quantum systems close to each other and you let them interact with each other, then they get into a state, they can get into a state where neither of these two quantum systems can be described by itself. So they get so entangled with each other that the only way you can describe the system is by describing all of it. You cannot describe it by describing each of these particles separately. Now it turns out that this entangled state of these two quantum particles or these two quantum systems persists even if we, after letting them interact with each other, we now separate them by a great distance. So they stay entangled, even though they are very far from each other. And so now imagine that we have these two qubits, which, are, which we put into this entangled state by letting them interact with each other. But now they've been separated by a very large distance. Now we want to understand what would happen if we measure the first qubit. Well, if we measure the first qubit, what's the probability that we see zero? Well, by rules of measurement, this is exactly a half. What's the new state? The new state is exactly zero, zero. What's the probability of one? Again, a half. What's the new state? It's one, one. What about the second particle? What about the second qubit? If we measured that by symmetry, the probability we would see zero is exactly a half. But now, what if we measured the first qubit and we got outcome zero? What's the probability that the second qubit is, is going to be measured to be zero? Well, this is the new state of the system. And so when we measure the second qubit, it's certain to turn out to be zero. But this is true no matter how far apart the two qubits are. And moreover, if the first qubit gave us answer one, the second qubit is certain to turn out to give us a one. This seems a little mysterious. How could it be that, that the outcome of the first qubit seems to affect the outcome of the second qubit? Well, here's how you can explain it away. What you could say is that when these two particles, when these two qubits were brought next to each other and they were allowed to interact with each other, maybe they decided to flip a random bit and they agreed upon both being in the state zero or both being in the state one, each with probability half. And so now when you take them far apart and you measure the first one, you see zero and one with equal probability. But if you see zero, then the other one is also in the state zero. So, so far, it doesn't seem so mysterious. In the next video, we are going to see that entanglement has even more mysterious properties, which we cannot explain away by this kind of classical intuition.